Right guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to build a battery. I'm gonna build a battery, which I'm gonna use for this, the FT891. So this radio is a 100 watt ham radio, and this pulls quite a lot of power. So, I mean, if you wanna use this out in the field, you're gonna need a big battery, of course. So, how big is the question? So right here, I've actually got a bunch of Tesla cells. So these are fresh out of a Tesla battery pack. They come from a company called bigbattery.com. Here's the cells. So these are 5,000 milliamp hour cells. They are 3.7 volts each. And you can see there, it's quite a lot of power in one battery, one particular cell. So these are lithium iron and we have these sort of like battery former type things. These are really useful for kind of building batteries. These things kind of snap together. You can kind of, you know, just make your own formations. So I've got three that way round, and then I'm gonna do the other three that way round. So in effect, you're making a series battery because what you're doing is you're connecting positive, we will be connecting positive to negative, and then you know, the and on the other side you do the same. So it kind of goes like a, like a string. So there we go. So we stick those in there like that. And this is kind of how I do it. And then you just stick that on the top. Now what we really wanna do is we wanna test the voltages of each cell. So what we're kind of gonna do is just measure each cell. So that's the positive end, that's the negative end. I'm gonna go through each cell and make sure that each cell is in the right voltage. Now you could do this beforehand before you start getting to this stage, um, or you could just do it like, like I do, just you know, put them all together and then just make sure. What you're looking for is any cells that are just really low on voltage or any ones that just stand out as being different. If you get them from a reliable supply, then they will all be sort of within you know, a couple of millivolts of each other. If they're not, then just, you know, move that one aside and put a new one in. Because if, if it's lower than usual, then the chances are it might have some self-discharge and that's not good, you don't want that. It will drag the rest of the pack down. So you want to find good cells. So that's my little formation. So what this is going to make, this is going to make a 15 amp hour battery. I mean, you know, I could make more, I could add more to them, but I want this sort of size. I think this is probably like a good size and 15 amp hours is quite a lot of energy to store for a radio. So the next step is some cut some nickel, some genuine nickel strip. This isn't the thickest nickel, we don't need that. Um, make it easier to weld. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a string across each of the tops of the batteries. This won't do anything yet because you're basically, all you're doing is connecting all the positives together, all the negatives together, all the positives together, and all the negatives. And then you flip the battery over, do exactly the same on the other side. And that creates a 15 amp hour block, and then you would then connect them in series. So I'll show you what to do. Um, I've got an electric spot welder here. You can see I've just started to spot weld these. Basically just two prongs. You've got a foot pedal down there, and I've connected it to a five amp hour LiPo, um, which is enough power to, you know, actually melt the nickel and get it, get it welded. So what I've also done is I've also used a little, um, a kind of rare earth magnet here to just hold that in place. Got to be careful with these because if they end up across the terminals, I might create an explosion. But yeah, that's how I kind of do it. All right, so that step's done. We've got our parallel connections done on both sides. So positive to negative to positive to negative. So none of these batteries are connected. It's just basically four individual batteries. I lied at the beginning. I said we're going to make a 3S um, 4P pack and I'm actually going to make a 4S 3p right here we go then so series connections are done as well um the welding's a little bit messy i've done it quite quick today but it'll work so that is our battery um now all we've got to do really is just put the power leads on i'm going to put a balancing lead on as well so i can charge it with um, this charger and make sure each cell is in balance and then we'll give it a charge and test it out okay so nearly done I've done the balancing connector, that's on there. See that just there, it's a bit short, but we can get an extension so we can get it into the charger properly. Um, I've got a fuse here, this was the original one, original one off the radio, the lead that came with the radio. And I've put an XT90, because that's what I'm kind of using at the moment. I need to heat shrink these up, actually. And um, so what I'm gonna do is just wrap this up. I'm gonna stick a bit of Kapton tape over it. Kapton's kind of like heat proof um, tape, so if anything does, go amiss in here then you know it will do go some way to protecting it and um, then I'm going to wrap the rest up with um, 
with tape. I might try and find a box as well for this to make it a little bit neater um, than just a sort of taped bundle. But yeah, that's the battery, guys. I'll stick it on the charger in a second so you can see what the cell voltages are and everything. Right, guys, it is on the charger. So I've got the balance connector in. It is too short for that. I need to get sort out some sort of extension. Um, but we can get it plugged in. And then you can basically see we got four cells there, all like pretty much on the nail. Got four amps going in. So that's charging up now. So what we at, we 15 volts. So fully charged, this would be 17 volts. I'm gonna take this to about 16-ish, because um, otherwise it's a little bit too much for the radio. Right, so I've come out to the car. Obviously, if you're in the car, you'd be using car power, but um, I wanted to test this out out here anyway, just to see, just for the journey home. And um, basically, so we turn it on, you can see there, the voltage display there, which is pretty handy, said so 14.7. So, you know, this radio is obviously, you know, it's a little bit above 13.8, but this should be all right up to about 15 and a half, um, heading towards 16 volts, I believe. Um, so, you know, if you charge that at 3.8 a cell, it'll be absolutely fine. You're going to lose a bit of capacity out of that battery, but I mean, it's a 15 amp hour battery. So, you know, how much, how much energy do you really need for, for doing something portable? Um, so yeah, we're on the 305 here. It's not really any activity at the moment. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So it's not up high at all, Andy, so you'll probably struggle with me shortly, yeah? Right, guys, so it's a couple of days later now. I've had a chance to play around with this radio on um, this battery um, out mobile. So I've not been using the car power, I've been using the battery itself. Um, I can confirm from other testing that this battery will handle the full 100 watts from this radio. Um, which is pretty amazing because you know that that is quite a significant amount of power this radio pulls about 15 amps or so something like that on on max power so um you know it's not a huge amount for this this battery and um, when you think when you think about each cell in this battery you could probably handle i think it's about seven seven amps something like that so seven times four is obviously 20 28 amps so it could do 28 amps continuously um, about that don't quote me on these figures i'm just going from memory here but it's not it's not a huge amount of power compared to you know the stuff we do with the e-bikes and all of that but it's great so what i'm going to do is i'm going to save some other tests where i'll show you the um the figures uh for another video so you can actually see you know what's happening in real time and um i'm going to carry on playing around with this and i'll let you know how it goes but good solution like if you can't if you haven't got backup power or you don't want to run your car battery down um, if you're sitting out and about and you want to run run some radios or, or any other gear really for that matter like you know this battery is flexible you can use it for anything so yeah hope you found this one interesting don't forget to subscribe and like and do all the usual things make sure you turn the notifications on so you get notified of new videos and i'll catch you in the next one guys